I'm Ari and today I have for you a palette full pack unboxing. This is my second palette full pack in my three month subscription to try out the box and see if it is an interesting subscription for me. I'm not sure yet. Like I said, this is only my second box. Oils was the first box and that definitely isn't my thing. I'm excited to see what's inside here. Do some swatching. Sometimes my swatching goes a little long, so if you don't like that, just kind of fast forward through that. But I like to show you what is possible with whatever supplies are in here and not just give you the basic colors because sometimes that will help you think outside the box in case you want to order this box from palette packs from their shop or if you have a subscription and you're just not sure where to start depending on what's in here we may do a longer swatching session and then we'll do some art and if the video runs too long i will split the creative portion of the video from the unboxing and that'll be in a coffee hour with ari you know, like I want to leave as much of the process there that I can. So if you want to follow along, you're not totally lost. Of course, it's time lapse, so it's it's a little bit faster than real time. But considering this is on your computer, you can pause and kind of catch up. I'm hoping to provide that content. I have coffee hour with Ari, which for now is just usually about an hour long art session watching me do a piece of art and those will usually be posted with what art I'm doing that day. However, I've noticed that some of my unboxings are about an hour long as well. I do want to provide content that's relaxing and that you can just watch or be able to join in. So I don't know that my videos are going to get much shorter, but we'll see over time what you guys prefer and what's best for the channel. Just look for those videos if you're interested in a more relaxing kind of just sit back and watch some art. Look for those coffee hours with Ari or some of the unboxings. They're a little bit longer. Let's get started and find out what's inside, shall we? I'm excited. Do I say that a lot? I think I do. I, I do get excited about new art supplies and even just the challenge. Even if it's something I don't particularly like that comes in the box. Well, sometimes you'll notice over time with me, it's really hard for me to hide my emotions. I'm kind of either not excited or I'm really excited. You'll get to get to know me and understand my excitement level. But even if I'm, I'm less than happy with it, I am excited about the experience of it and trying to figure out something to make with these things. My December art snacks did not go well. <laughs> so let's see if we can do better with December 2019 powerful packs. Let's go and open this baby up. We have the December 2019 palette full packs. This is my second box, as I said. So let's open it and find out what's inside. Oh, more paint. Right away, Chris, we got our Chris. I kind of like the gold one. We've got our Christmas squiggles. And it looks like we are going to be painting again. This time we have a White Sable number no. 8, Robert Simmons 760B. We have a flat shader, another really long brush. And I believe the Robert Simmons can be used with oil or watercolor, the White Sable ones, but I'm not sure. We'll check that. Maybe they'll say on the uh, menu this month. White Sable flat shader. We have some golden fluid acrylic. I'm gonna shorten that to Benzy Yellow Medium. PY 154, they're sealed, so I will do that off camera. We have titanium white, golden fluid acrylic, PW6. We have the quinacridone magenta, PR122. We have the phthalo blue green shade, PB154. We 
have a spray top. So I'm not sure what that is that goes to, but we'll find out. We have the artist panel for oils and acrylic smooth finish, a four by four flat, acrylic primed and ready to use. We have another artist panel for oil and acrylic smooth finish, six by six, and the third six by 12. And this one is Art Alternatives Economy Canvas Panel. It's a little bit different. This is panel and I mean this is a panel too but it's a canvas panel and this is a smooth surface. There's our bottle for that and that is all that's in the box. So we have another painting box and I'm starting to see that as kind of that you know I guess I should have thought about that but palatable packs shows a palette of paint. It seems to me most of their boxes revolve around painting. You may want to think about that. I'm not 100% sure on that, but based on the, the two I've, I've received so far, and I actually bought one pass box that had graphics aqua pens, but they are a watercolor based pen. So still kind of in the painting family. I'm not sure about that, but that's something to think about. So this is the December 2019 Premier Pack Golden Fluid Acrylics. If you watched my last video on gouache and gouache swatching, my recommendation was when you're trying a new medium or new paints or new brand to buy your three primary colors. So the yellow, the blue, and a magenta or red, depending on what brightness you're going for. And always, if you add a titanium white, uh, ivory black, you extend these three colors. But if you just buy these three, you can make all your secondary colors and skin tones. It's really great that Palatful Pack was thoughtful enough to give us those primary colors so we can get a range of colors. The manufacturer retail price on those is $32.06. There's no fillers or extenders added. Their consistency is similar to heavy cream. We'll see that when we swatch. We have the Robert Simmons White Sable Brush. The brush may be used for acrylic, watercolor, or oil. So, but once you use it for oil, there's no going back. So I, I have lost one of my brushes from last month's Palatful Pack to the seldom used oil brush can. All right, so we have our Golden Artist Colors Fluid Acrylics, manufacturer price $32.06. We have our Robert Simmons White Sable Brush with the Flat Shader Brush, size 8. Manufacturer price is $10.25, so we're at $42.31 so far. We have our primed panels, 6x6, 4x4, ampersand is the brand. Those have a manufacturer price of $4.41. We have the Art Alternatives Canvas Panel, 6x12. Manufacturer retail price of $2.95. We have our spray bottle, manufacturer price of $2.99. And it says you can use this to keep your acrylics wet or create a variety of effects. So our palatable pack prompt and challenge, make a drawing or painting based on your interpretation of the prompt. So December 2019, palatable prompt, we have holiday or cozy or gift or excitement. Fluids have the same pigment load as heavy body acrylics, but the viscosity is similar to heavy cream. Fluid acrylics blend easily with acrylic colors and readily tint gels, mediums, gessos, and grounds. Fluids are extremely versatile and ideal for fine brushwork, glazing, staining, water media techniques, and more. They have a wide array of colors. And as I said, we got the three primaries, so that'll give us a nice color range. Now we just have to think of an idea. So let's go swatch these out, and then maybe we'll sketch up some ideas and do a painting. All right, let's go. As I'm setting up my palette, I thought I would show you kind of how runny these paints are so they're not as thick as 
you know, acrylic you would buy at Michael's or Joann's. They're much more fluid and they don't wipe off very easily either. So they do clean up well. That's something to keep in mind is that these are really liquid, formulated to be like heavy cream. So they're a much more liquidy paint. So it'll be interesting to swatch these out, but I just wanted to show you that pouring them out, that they are definitely a thinner material than a normal acrylic that you, or what you think of acrylics. So let's get to swatching, okay? Okay. All right, let's do some color swatching. So I put the three primary colors on my plate again in a clock fashion, put a drop of each color here so we can mix equal parts. That doesn't look quite equal, does it? And blue can be overpowering. All right, that looks more equal. Let's heavy to the red. So we'll just dilute it just a little bit. See if we can get, there we go, a more orange color. Oh, they go down nicely. They're nice and smooth. This brush has a nice spring to it. And I think I'm going to start with more yellow on this green, too. That's nice. I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm really liking the texture of this paint. It is just, it's lovely. I can't believe I'm saying that about acrylics. It's just oh, smooth. Can you see that? It just, it's like silk, spreading silk. I guess that doesn't quite make sense, does it? I'm really liking it. But the truth will be, I'm going to add a little bit more red to this too. Proof is in the pudding. Once we start making a painting with it, definitely want to get more purple. We're getting there. I want to be more purple than blue. So the other thing I guess I'm noticing is I think these paints, you know, it's one ounce, one ounce containers of the paint. We'll see how quickly they dry out between making my palette and when I actually go to use them. Maybe that's what we need the water for. But it just doesn't seem like they're going to go a long way. You know, like the normal bottles are about two to three ounces. So this won't go that far, I don't think. All right, we made our three secondary colors. So this is the color, this is the primary magenta I was telling you about when I say printer primaries. This magenta is more a printer primary. If you've ever tested your color printer, you will see a color like this, a yellow, and then a, usually a lighter blue. For this one, we mix the yellow and the magenta equally and we we had more of a red, then we add a little bit more yellow to get the orange. So red isn't going to be your first color and you get that by equal parts of this. And then to get an orange, you need to add more yellow. Just so you're aware of that, you go, there's no red for Christmas. Because the challenge is a holiday challenge. We didn't swatch out our blue. That's really nice. Okay, add a little water. These thin out really nicely with water, too. Maybe that's what they meant by unique effects with the water. Um, once it dries, it doesn't move. So you can get watered down shades of this paint. And I did say it was fast drying, and it is. Oh, I guess that one wasn't. So, and as you notice, I mean, besides, I try to stay clean and it just doesn't work. Skin tones, take a little bit of white. Yeah, see that they're already dry on the plate. You are going to need that spray bottle. Have a nice kind of peachy skin tone. The green, we kind of get a brown. Let's see if that's true with this. Beigey shade. We used up our whole double swatch of orange. Remember what I was saying too, I think of these colors in between, you can keep lightening those up on your palette as well.
They really are fast drying. You may want to think about that, how much paint you put on your palette or really make use of your spray bottle that came in the kit. This one is too green. So we'll add a little bit of each of those other colors. The red and the yellow, we'll add a little bit of each. Do a little faster swatching than normal. There's a nice teal blue, mixing our blue and our green half and half. I like that color, that's really nice. A little bit of opaque and transparency to that. So that might be something we should think about as we layer as well. So that kind of brings that back to a green where they overlap. Mm, interesting. No, I didn't think I was going to like this so much, but I'm really liking the paints. They're really an interesting texture and consistency. Oops, we have a little bit of color in our brush. See, isn't that interesting? So that'll be a consideration you want to think about when you're doing a painting is how these colors overlap. What do you think? I mean, I'm excited to experiment with these. That's kind of my thing. So here we're make, making it much more yellow, a little orange, the other way too, more of a red orange. And this is just my B paper kind of swatching book that came in a palette full pack earlier this year. Six by six B paper, deluxe media. I like it for swatching. It's worked out well for me. As I said, that's already dry. Let's see what color purples. That's kind of a deep, rich, sort of red direction. So it's just all about playing with these colors. Find the colors you really like. And remember, we can lighten everything up. Lightening up the magenta, which are nice pink shades. Just taking our nice mix of purples. This is our bluish purple that we made, lightened up, so we can make some nice pastel colors as well. That, oh, it's really weird. Aqua is not my favorite color, and yet in paints, for some reason, I, lately I've been really drawn to aqua colors. Put that brighter shade next to that. So just by looking at this, how are you feeling about these colors? I think they're really vibrant, and we're able to make some interesting colors. Is that green still on my brush? Sorry about that. It's reminding me of Easter, not Christmas. How are you? There, is there any combination we didn't really cover? Oh, see what colors you can come up with. That was a good swatching, I think. And I have most of the paint on my hands. I'm really liking the consistency. So they do dry out pretty quickly. So you will need your spray bottle with water. And again, something to keep in mind is the transparency to these if you're doing a layered painting. So I don't know if that'll end up being tricky when we get to that point or not, but these are really nice bright colors. I'm liking that. When you use the primary, printer primaries, like the magenta, the yellow, and the blue, your colors are going to be more vibrant in your color wheel. And I was describing that in my gouache video with the portrait, is depending on what primaries you start with will dictate how bright your color wheel is. And this one is going to be a bright one because it's using those primary colors. As I said, when you go shopping for paints and want to try out a new medium like these golden fluid acrylics or a watercolor, you're going to want to decide before you go, do you want the printer primaries and have bright colors or do you want the warm or cool primaries 
form a little bit more subdued palettes. And like if you're doing landscape paintings or portraits, you may not want the bright colors. But if you're doing more abstract art or just modern painting, you may want the brighter colors. So think about that when you're buying your primers. I wasn't happy that it was another painting box. However, I am happy with the consistency of these and how smooth they go down on this paper. It'll be interesting to try them on the surfaces that we that were provided in the December 2019 premiere pack. I'm excited to play around with these a little bit because I mean even their texture on the paper is kind of silky. It's I've, I've never worked with any acrylics like this and you know what they may just move those acrylics up ahead of gouache. I mean and then this this transparency opacity test was quite interesting as well and that they dry so quickly. As I said I sit here and feel my paints. I, I just I'm I'm loving these so I'm excited and look at those colors. Oh bright jewel tones. Yeah, I'm I'm liking it. Let's, I see one more area we go. Remember the other skin tone I mentioned was starting, when you start with pink, let's add in some yellow. So really beige, beige. So a little bit more of a yellow tone. Using the pink and moving it with some yellow towards the skin tone. And if we want a little more tan. So it sort of re-wets. Yeah, so that's why I do. I got too much blue. And all I wanted was smidgen. What was the darkest dark? So we, we were able to get some pretty dark darks, some grayish skin tones, a little purple skin tone, our beiges. So look how light we were able to get. All right, that's it. I'm going to quit there. Otherwise, I'll be swatching all day. You know, I'm an avid swatcher and obviously a mess maker because I have the paint all over me. So I guess we'll see how easily the pigment comes off hands. Yeah, so that was mess. I don't like messes, but I really love these colors. Can you see the texture? I don't know if you can, but I'm loving it. So... They may have converted me to acrylics, except for this opacity. That, that is going to be interesting to play with because I don't know what will happen and how to account for that in the painting. I'm excited to start painting. How about you? Let's go create something. how these reactivate. Not very well. well that's interesting. But I just try to play around with these real quick and see what they do on this board. This blue is the only one I really had thick enough to reuse. Such interesting paint. There's just something really unique about it that I can't quite explain why I like it so much. It's just so interesting. Such a weird medium.
like it expands out. It's just really interesting. So feel free to play around with your little board and try out some things. I mean, it's starting to stain a little bit. I'm just so intrigued. That's why I keep starting over. It's just, what a what an interesting concept. Maybe my board is too wet now. Alright, so just so you know, everything on my palette did not reactivate. It just is dry, pasty. So I don't use them right away. Now this blue was a thicker, but this green, this greens, you know, nothing is really coming up from any of the hardened stuff. I think I'm going to leave it there, and if I do another video with my holiday prompt, I will post that in Ari's coffee hour. I sprayed some water, and I thought, well, why am I not videotaping this? I'm going to try. Ah, it does follow the water splotches. So it kind of spreads like watercolor. That's fun. So we do get movement on the paper too. My paper's not really happy about it, but that so it's a little bit of mixed media effect you're definitely able to play with this even on paper and I just wanted to show that to you
So wherever the water is, it kind of flows. Cool is that? I don't know. I think this is really cool. So I'm not technically trying to make anything, just playing around. How fun is that? So this was the Strathmore Mixed Media Paper. It's a little bit thicker paper. So there you go. You can make the same effects on paper. It dries a little quicker on here, but it's still interesting. So I had to try that on paper before I cleaned up. I didn't want to waste the paint. How fun that it does the same thing on paper. I kind of can't stop playing with it. So really interesting, really interesting medium. I'm, again, I'm blown away. It's a lot of fun. You know I'm having fun when I keep playing with it. But I just wanted to share that, yes, it does kind of do the same blending as it did on the panel. It just dries a little quicker, so you have to maybe put more water, less paint areas to begin with. But how cool is that? There's that little panel. See, doesn't this look like little flowers? Lots of fun. Really enjoying it. And I guess that answers the question about paper. Hope that was informative. So one note about these paints. They're definitely not a cheap paint. I, I'm going through them pretty quickly, so it'll be interesting. You'll have to watch my other video on my palpable prompt, because I'm going to try to work with these in a few different consistencies, because just the little bit I, I, I use a lot just in testing out these supplies. And so I'm just wondering how far a one ounce bottle will go. You know, is it going to last as long as a one ounce of watercolor, which lasts me a pretty long time. So it just seemed like a lot, you know, that I was using a lot for just a little bit of painting. And this was another neat feature, if you can see that on the back, that it gives the transparency to opaque of the color, that it has a gloss finish. I like that little scale on these. High tinting, you know, rather than using some older system to to know light fastness and whether they're high staining, um, that's really a nice feature. And each one has a different transparency, so that really will help too to look at that. Remember on our swatching, I had said that, you know, the transparency here was pretty high. Um, both these colors have this yellow and this is a more transparent color. So that might help you in your mixing as well. Same here, this had the yellow in it because back to the magenta, it's a more opaque color. So out of the three colors, the yellow was definitely more transparent. So that's a nice feature on these golden fluid acrylics. They give you that data that's easy to read and you don't have to keep thinking back and forth whether that was the light fastness or the staining quality of the paint. Golden way to go on that. I also read a little bit more about these. It's an acrylic polymer, which it does say right on the bottle. And that kind of gives it its little bit more flex and its feel. So that was interesting too. So I learned a little bit off camera and I wanted to share with you. And as I said, watch for the other video and I will give you more information on what I think about these paints, how they work to produce a portrait. So that might be something too, is maybe if you aren't liking how transparent
colors are. Your choice is to either get a yellow that's more opaque if you're not liking the transparency or getting a pink and blue that's more transparent so you can that they're all kind of in the same family of transparency or of opaqueness. This is my paper that dried and I really found it interesting. It definitely doesn't dry quite as bright on this paper in the watery form. So the more water you add, the more washed out it gets, but it was still fun. And here's this totally dry. See how it has a little sheen to it. We'll just keep on creating. Okay, so we did the swatching. Now I wanna show you some interesting things. We have our four colors from the palful packs right here. I swatched them and kind of showed you them on the panel provided and then some mixed media paper. On the golden fluid acrylic sheet, it had said that these fluid acrylics blend easily with acrylic colors and readily tint gels, mediums, gessos, and grounds. Fluids are extremely versatile. They're for glazing, staining, and water media techniques. But we don't have any of that in our kit. And either you're gonna have some at home, or maybe you'll see a technique here and wanna try it, and you can know which medium to go purchase. And I also wanna point out, in case you're gonna ask, is I have the paint puck. It's called the paint puck. It has a silicone bottom. You put it in the bottom of your water glass and these little fingers kind of help the paint get out from between the bristles. Just in case you're asking, I really like them. They have ones for oil paint, which you won't see on this channel, most likely, um, that can hold turpentine or other, um, I can't think of the word. So it works for turpentine to help clean your brushes, where these are silicone and made for watercolors, acrylics, etc. So what do I have in front of me? I have some golden molding paste. This is a semi-opaque acrylic texture medium. This matte medium is a translucent low gloss acrylic extender. I have some Gamblin wax medium. I'm not sure if this will work with that, but let's try it. I have some Liquitex professional pouring medium. I have some Liquitex clear gesso. I have some golden black gesso and some De La Rowney acrylic gesso. I'm not sure if I'll try all of them, but we'll get to several of them just so you know what these supplies are going to do. I might run out before I'm ever able to make my prompt, but I think this is much more useful for my viewers than creating the artwork because your artwork is going to be yours and this information is a little bit more helpful than just seeing me create art. But if I have enough paint left and I do the prompt, it'll be up under the coffee hour with Ari because this video is probably gonna be pretty long. Let's get started playing. I like to play with colors. So I'm going to use my six by 12. Remember, these are really like runny paints. I may not do a lot of mixing in this portion because I kind of did the mixing earlier but what we want to test out is how does this mix in with our, our mediums? Let's see, where should we start? Let's try some molding paste. So molding paste is a texture medium. Are you able to see that? It's a little pasty. I realize I should have my palette knife. In last month's box, palfo back we received a palette knife which I've been using this plastic one forever so this medium is kind of like a paste like almost like a toothpaste consistency I used it when I was doing some art journaling in mixed media this is nice to rub through a stencil and get a pattern on your paper uh, maybe we'll do that too I'm just gonna use a little bit for each color. So kind of layer which medium I'm using. This is the matte medium by Golden. It's a translucent low gloss acrylic extender. I don't think with that one I'm gonna bother with the white. Clear gesso all the way down here. Again, I don't think I'll bother. 
Um, the black gesso, I just, that one I want to try with the white. So I'm going to put a blob there. I'm not really going to try that one with other colors. I don't think it'll show up. But I want to see if we can get, if that white will tint our black gesso gray. And I don't think I'll do the white gesso. We'll do a little bit of the wax. Like I said, I don't know if wax is supposed to be used with acrylic. Because, you know, it's... I, don't, I just don't know, but we'll find out, won't we? So, and that was the Gamblin Cold Wax Medium. I think I had this for oil paints. And it says not to leave it on your skin for very long or breathe it in for too long. And then if we have time, I will get to a little pouring as well. Let's just quickly mix up some colors. So first we're mixing it into this molding paint. Some red or the pink, I forget this is a magenta and not a, a red. Just a little yellow. That looks like it's nicely high tinting. This time hopefully we'll get all the paint out of our brush. It just gives your brush, those little paint pucks, give your brush a little surface, a little texture to rub up against and help get the paint out of the brush. And we're going to add some white to this scratch paint and stuff that's in there. I'm getting paint all over myself was from the gesso. Now let's apply the blue to this was the matte medium. So basically I'm loading my brush with a, a blob of the paint or maybe two blobs. I guess in a way this is like an art video. It's a demo. So we're loaded up with paint, putting it into our matte medium. I'm starting to realize that I'm a messy artist that I get stuff on my hands. I never thought I was. I thought, and maybe it's the, just the difference between watercolor, or maybe I just never noticed with watercolor. But now with acrylics and oils, I've noticed that I get stuff on my hands all the time and I just feel silly being on camera with big globs of paint on my hands. Oops, see, I, there was a little bit of paint left in the brush. I forgot what you call this metal thing, but I'll buy the metal thing. Now I'm getting paint kind of sticky. All right, so the wax medium, like I said, I don't know if it will mix in. Ugh. I guess it's been a while since I used wax medium. I don't know how that's going to come out of my brush. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Now I have fear that my brush is going to be waxy. I should have thought about that. So we will see, because wax and water don't quite mix, and it does feel like that, that I kind of goofed up my brush. I will have to wash that in between. This time, let's use our brains and use our palette knife that's made for mixing weird textures. So it is mixing in. Yeah, I'm, I'm happily surprised. Like I said, I'm there's just something about this paint that's too new. Who knew I'd like acrylic paint? Shh, don't tell me what. It's not that I haven't used acrylic paints before. You know, I buy them at Joann's and Michael's. It's just, I, you know, didn't really care for them. I like them better than oils, but again, it's not one of my favorites. And basically, now our last one is that clear gesso. Well, I guess we have the black gesso too. Let's scoop up some blue. So I'm just getting out like a dollop. This is a lot easier for mixing. I guess I haven't had a good palette knife that I could mix and so I guess I've always just used my brush. It's kind of nice. Easier to wipe off than the brush as I learn things along with you guys. So that's a clear gesso. It's not the white gesso. I'm going to take this white and mix it into the black. I mean really you'd probably mix your white gesso with your black gesso instead of mixing it this way because <laughs> why would you want to waste your paint when gesso is cheaper. We've mixed. Now we will see how these things go down on our board. So these were the stencils I was talking about. They are nice for mixed media. If you're a mixed media artist, those are really handy. Purchased some on Amazon. I just found that I wasn't liking the mixed media so much. So I have some of those on hand. I really didn't do enough of the blue. Let's just add a little bit more of the molding paste. So these first ones are the molding paste and then we'll do the wax as well. Grab a little more color. So to me this becomes like frosting. This is how I do it. I don't know how other people do it. Okay. Kind of smear it over. 
And I forgot these are quick drying, so I'm gonna work a little faster. Benefits you. I'm also not trying to create anything. I'm just trying to get some medium down on this board. So that's our molding paste and see how it kind of creates a texture down your painting. So now if you want to pour acrylic or use spray inks or spray acrylics, you let this dry and then you can spray acrylics and let them run over and it creates interesting pattern and fills up the white space behind those little textured bits. It's fun. If you like mixed media, that's kind of a fun experiment. So let's go down to this corner and scoop up some of that wax. And remember, we're looking at how is the tinting of these liquid golden acrylics or fluid acrylics. And I'm thinking it's really great. They tinted, yeah. Now I can I can smell that. Ugh. That is not a pleasant smell with the wax. Now I understand why you don't want to be inhaling that for hours. So again, the wax creates a nice texture. You can build up areas and it will, you know, it'll resist some of the water. You can have fun effects with that molding paste. This was the wax. Then we have the matte medium. Matte. Here we can get our, our paintbrush back. So the matte medium may take some of the shine out of the paint. I'm not liking this canvas board. On paper and on those panels, it's just so smooth, but these little bumps of the panel, it's not my favorite surface for these. I guess I really like the fact how smooth these paints are. And so to me, to be on a surface that takes that away makes them a little less fun. Again, the matte medium. So remember, when I showed you the paints, so the blue was a high gloss paint. Using a matte medium, technically, we're supposed to get a more matte finish with our paint. Whether we will or not, I don't know if I have the right ratios. Maybe I should have gone a little heavier with the matte medium. All these are pretty much, the, the yellow is the least glossy, but it's still a pretty high gloss. I'm guessing if you go through their colors on their chart, there's probably less glossy paints and more glossy paints. There's more opaque paints and more transparent paints. Know that when you're making a decision about buying more paints, look at that those handy dandy charts on their bottles to figure out, you know, do you like the glossy factor? Or when you go and buy, maybe you want to go and buy another three paints in opaque and see the difference in the painting. I think that would be interesting to me to try that. The blue and the magenta are more opaque. The yellow is more transparent. Okay, let's keep going. I don't want to take up your whole day, but I just, I'm hoping you're finding these videos helpful. Let's see how they mix. Nice, how fun. As long as they're wet, you can still mix them. And then we have our clear gesso. This would be useful, I guess, if you're wanting to make a background that was tinted. Do a little blue here, put our green color. You can mix them a little bit on the board itself. This has the same effect on the board as the matte medium. It kind of just floats on the surface. It's not very thick that it's covering up the texture of the board. So I do like the smoother surfaces for these paints. Whether you will or not, I mean that's, and I guess that's another positive point about powerful packs. They thought of that. They put a textured surface and some shiny surfaces. A piece of paper that this medium would work on would have been a nice addition as well, just to try it on several surfaces. It's nice that they provide three surfaces. This has definitely given us an opportunity to try this material out. And then this is just the a more gray version of the black gesso, just mixing the white with the golden black gesso. This could get nice gray gesso background. That could be helpful. Our last little experiment. I'm not I'm not an expert 
liquid acrylic pour. In fact, I bought this small four ounce bottle at Michael's to try some of my pigmented acrylic inks in a pouring medium. So I haven't even opened it. Those of you who are experienced in this, you can leave comments below of what I should have done differently because I have no clue what I'm doing, but I want to try it out. Maybe this isn't enough. I don't know if I should be pouring it in or if it'll work. Hmm. You know, I'm just going to trust my instincts on this and say I should probably plop the colors into the pouring medium whether that's right or not. And I don't know if I'm supposed to swirl it at all. That's all I'm gonna do, because I don't, I really don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, I have this, that already has color on it. I'm going to let it just run on my canvas because maybe we can reuse that. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying it in some different mediums for your viewing pleasure. So I'm a little sad. I have some, I don't know how to fix that. Will it help if I pick it up and put some color on there? Cover up the areas that I'm I missed. So probably not what it's supposed to look like. I definitely have paint everywhere now. But there you go. So that's in the pouring medium. I quite like it. Okay. As I said, I don't hide my emotions well. When I like something, I really like it. Oh, here, let me show you that up close, even though I'm going to get it all over my fingers. Um, hopefully that'll dry before I'm done editing the video and I can show you what it looks like dry. These are fast drying, so I'm not... I'm thinking it won't take that long. I'm going to kind of let those paints run off. I will probably do a little time lapse on that. Because actually after this point, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm just supposed to let the paint dry. I'm kind of liking what's happening under the paint. I don't know. I don't know these things. I apologize for the messy fingers. It just feels weird to be messy on camera. There's our pouring medium. There's our wax medium. I didn't know that it would mix in with the wax, but it does. Here's the molding paste, the golden molding paste. And that was the Gamblin wax. Golden molding paste. Golden matte medium. It looks like the the blue as it's drying is a little less shiny, but I don't know that it made much difference. So maybe I didn't have the proportions right for that. We have the clear gesso and the black gesso. So there's your colors mixing it with some different mediums. And I hope that was more helpful than seeing me create art. But if you want to see what art I end up creating out of these, Click the subscription button and hit the notifications and then you'll be informed when that video is uploaded. You're going to see that a lot of my channel is rather than just doing an unboxing, I want to play with these for my, this, this helps me out knowing what's possible with each month's box. Like I'm not one to just take a box at face value. I like to kind of figure out like, okay. So I have some stuff laying around the house. I have some gesso, I have some matte medium that I'm not using because I don't really like acrylics that much. And now I just did a little art piece that I actually kind of like and tried something that, as I said, this has probably been sitting around for six months and or maybe even a year now, and I never used it. These paints, finding out how they tint was a good opportunity to try that. So without this box, I probably, this probably would have sat in my art area for another, another year or two because acrylics, as I said, aren't really my thing, but these liquid golden fluid acrylics, or I should call them fluid. They're not liquid acrylics, they're fluid acrylics and their texture is like heavy cream. So they're really creamy, really 
not too runny, not watery, but a nice, you can see, you know, it doesn't keep spreading like water. It kind of pools up nicely on the palette. They are fast drying. I don't know if they'll be quite as, oh, those are dry. Oh, well, maybe the little bit of yellow isn't. Yep, let's see. And so far the, the paint has come off my hands with soap and warm water. So it's easy cleanup compared to the oils. Fun. This is what I like to do. I mean, sometimes when I get really self-critical and get frustrated making art, but there's days that that will keep me from doing any creating at all. And that's what I'm finding valuable about the subscription boxes is it gives me a reason to play and not have to take it seriously because I'm learning about these different mediums that I don't normally use or would buy. It gives me an opportunity to, to be, to me, this is being creative. I don't have to make a finished artwork to have fun and enjoy a product. I can just put colors on paper and on a gray day, seeing these bright colors and just putting them on paper is enough to bring joy to my day. How these colors mixed, that was fun too. Like it's a little dark, you know, like I wish there was more pink and yellows cause those are kind of my favorite colors. Just remember that even if you're an artist or a wannabe artist and you don't feel like you can make great art, just be willing to get these and play with the supplies. That's in itself is fun. You don't have to create a great work of art or I know several people that have passed away now. They had always wanted to become an artist, but they were so self-conscious about making bad art that they never got around to doing it. And not that, you know, well, one, I don't want you to wait till you're on your deathbed to realize or not realize your dreams. I want you to have a joyful life. And so if art supplies just interest you even in a tiny way and you're not doing it, I want you to get out there and do it and just put color on paper. Experiment, like let's say you love watercolor, just go get a little sample of three watercolors and some watercolor paper. It doesn't matter what kind, what brand, just get a few little colors and start putting the colors on paper and just enjoy that. And then as you progress, you'll maybe want to do a picture and try different things. But swatching and playing with color is creative enough to fulfill a lot of people. Once you break through that, that wall of, it's kind of like the gateway art. <laughs> is just playing with color is the gateway to creating more art because you you want to experiment and you want to see what you can do with it. At first it'll just be blobs and then later on you'll be like, oh, I wonder if I could make a bunny or an apple. You'll try it. Maybe the first time it won't look like your ideal apple, but it'll get there. They weren't lying when they said it's a good tinting medium. So I really enjoyed this month's box. I don't know about you if this was interesting or if you're now interested in these golden fluid acrylics. I know I don't exactly care for regular acrylics, but I'm definitely willing to fully experiment with the set I have. The next step is to try a full painting and see what this opaque transparent paint can do in a painting, whether it's frustrating and I'll provide that video in my coffee hour with Ari rather than attaching it to this because this one is already so long. Again, please leave comments below. Let me know if you like this longer content. If you like seeing all the possibilities or it's still not all the possibilities of this paint, even though I'm showing you a lot of different things, just remember this is not the limit of what you can do with these paints. But I just wanted to provide you some other possibilities you could do with the supplies in this month's powerful pack for December, 2019. I think this was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about this medium, which is going to help me when I go to create my palatful prompt for the month. I now see what I can do and what the limits and possibilities of this medium are. All right. We just finished our December, 2019 premiere pack. 
golden fluid acrylic. Next, we had the Robert Simmons white sable brush paints. We had the three surfaces, the canvas panel and the two amber sand smooth prime panels. We had the spray bottle and the value was about $50. So it was a really good deal. We swatched out our colors and we had all these brilliant colors. So the transparency of these and we'll make maybe some really interesting paintings. We did some pastels and that kind of changed the texture of the paint just a little bit using the titanium white. But we have the bright color smooth paint. The paints are definitely a clear winner in my book. I'm really liking them and thinking I'm going to really play with these this month and use these supplies up because that's what it's kind of about is spending time for a month you have before your next premiere pack comes in the mail. You're able to play with this and experiment and hopefully you use it up and you don't just let it sit around and get dusty. You know, hopefully you're able to explore the medium fully for one month before your next box and decide whether it's something you want to invest in at a later date or it's something that you're not really happy with. Like the oils I, last month I was not happy with. This is my second palette packs. I see now that they're, they lean real heavily on the painting which their logo is a palette and a brush, so I guess I should have guessed that. Palette packs, I'm pretty happy with this box. I was happy with the oils. I was happy with the oils. I, in the sense that I'm glad I got to try them again last month, realize I really don't like them. However, at the beginning of this video, I said, you know, these rate about number three on my list of things I like is acrylic. However, this fluid acrylic has me very interested. I really enjoyed all. I love the texture of it. I love the playfulness of it on these panels. So I've enjoyed the packs I've received so far. I didn't necessarily like the oils personally. It's not my thing. But being able to experiment with them once again and maybe solidify that in my head that, you know, I'm probably not going to be really happy when oil packs come up again. But in the meantime, you know, I now have fluid acrylics to play with and I'm really excited about those and the possibilities for this month of what I can do with those. And depending on how they how they paint, if the transparency becomes an issue or not, or if it adds to the painting, those are all intriguing questions to me. So in that way, even if I end up not totally loving these, I really like them. And even if it was just putting the color on paper. It, it was a lot of fun. I, I think regardless of the supplies included, I definitely got my money's worth. It's something I would have never went out and bought myself and tried, and yet now I really like it. This was what was included in our palette packs. Oh yeah, that was the only other thing, is how fast it dries. That's probably my only, my only negative about this paint, is that I can't reactivate it. And it seems like such a waste, all this paint that was on my palette, that I, I can't reuse it. Only put out what you think you're going to need for that paint session, and realize it dries pretty fast. I mean, this is pretty dry. And maybe the little thicker parts, but most of this is dry. So, and not being able to reactivate it with water is a little frustrating. But again, I'm coming from a, a watercolor background, not a whole ton of experience with acrylics. It's just something I have to learn about it, and I've got a whole month to do it. Look for my other video with the palpable prompt. I'll hopefully have that up within the week. Check my Instagram because there'll also be sneak peeks at what I'm up to. I hope you enjoyed today's content and this was helpful for you and you learned a little something along the way like I did. These, these tint really nicely. I'm Ari and this is Shamelessly Creative. Now go out there and get creative yourself. Bye.